What is Microsoft Copilot and why did Microsoft just create an ad for the Super Bowl? This is huge. If we ever wanted a signal that Microsoft is going big time mainstream on AI, this is it. Now, Copilot is used in the Microsoft world across a whole lot of different products. This video and this ad at the Super Bowl is all about the headline Microsoft Copilot, which is the free tool that anyone can use for free to use generative AI to do things like creating images, to do things like quizzing you on your studies, research, creating content, creating code, a whole lot of different use cases. And I'm going to take you through, if you haven't seen this before, how you can do all of these things, how to get started and what you can get out of it in terms of things in your personal life for creativity and learning. You can use this on a web browser, on your mobile device, anywhere. To get started, simply navigate to copilot.microsoft.com in your browser or download this for your Apple or Android device. I am logged in here with my personal Microsoft account. You can actually use this without logging in, but some of the features will be limited. In particular, image generation, you do need to be signed in with that account. As I said, not work or school free account. I've got down the side here, recent activity. You can actually turn this off if you don't want it to be tracking that. I'm still not sure if I love that or not. We've got some plugins here. So we've got this connected to the internet. So you're going to get up to date search results plus some other tools here. So if you want to be using this to search for recipes, flights, restaurants, shopping, then you can switch on those toggles and have a go with those things. I've found so far mostly they're more useful for the US market than what I'm doing, but feel free to have a play. All sorts of ideas that come up in the carousel here of things that you can try, so have a browse there. And then we've got different levels of creativity for the model. You can allow it to be creative, balanced, and you'll see the color of the experience changes so you know what you're doing, or precise. So depending on the nature of the task, at more at risk of the hallucinations if you're using the creative things and if you're doing something where you need that higher degree of precision then you can choose that. What I want to do is show you some of the most common use cases as well as how this is different from a search engine because all of us see this text box and we do search engine type things. So let's have a look at image generation first because the two most common things that Microsoft have found people are using this for so far is image generation and there's a new thing that's in here if you have seen this before. This has changed very recently and search engines and how they compare. So we will come back to that. So first off, please create a vibrant design of red roses and butterflies. I've found it's better if you're not asking it to do things that involve people or words. That's quite a nice one there. So you've actually got some other options in here now. So once this comes up, we'll give it a second. You can see some things coming through that you can change the format of the image, but I can also click on some things. So let's say I highlight that particular flower in the middle there. I've got the option of color pop or blur background. So let's just go in and do that color pop and looks, look what it does. I can accept that or I can undo it. So if you're generating images where you've got background and you want to blur it out, that would be a really good feature. We'll give it a second to uh, go back to where it was before. Let's turn this into steampunk. I quite like that as a style. You can turn it into pixel art, watercolor, all of those types of things. You'll notice this is also now connected to designer. This is another free tool that's available in the Microsoft stack. If you haven't seen that before, I would encourage you to check that out. Once you're happy with the image you've got, you've got options here to simply copy it and then you can paste it somewhere else. You can get a shareable link to that image or you can choose to click edit in designer and that will open that tool. So that's a tool that allows you not just to create images but also create other bigger designs and feel free to go ahead and explore that. But for now, back to Copilot, which is the star of this show. We can also give it context. I will suggest to you, if you're gonna start with something completely different, because I'm gonna move on to something else here, click the new topic button, because it does actually remember what you've done and it gets a bit confused. If you jump around, you might get some unexpected results. I've got a dragon slaying scene here, not a particularly well-written one. This is actually AI generated. So I've given it some context here. I haven't asked it to do any Anything. I've just prompted it with some information and it's giving me some questions and suggestions about some of the things it can do. So it's offering to help me with editing. It could probably do with a rework, let's face it, but I'm going to say this is a scene from a children's cartoon. Please generate some images to go with it. That's a strange video. <laughs> 
given me. So this is now again for the context, it's going to generate those images. We'll just give that a moment and you can see what it's doing here. There's more than one thing in there. So we've actually got a dark and damp cave filled with bones and treasure. The hero swings his sword, the dragon bites through the hero's sword. Here we go. Not sure if these are great for children and they're all quite different models. So I would actually want to be giving this a bit more information in the prompting of specifically what I want from the cartoon. But you can see it's actually given me the pieces of the story there. Let's see an example of some code generation here. We'll go to the new topic for this one. I'm looking for something more precise rather than more creative. I hope you're still enjoying some of the uh, random suggestions coming up there on the carousel. Let me know what ideas you have that you like here. So this is something where you can actually just give it a straight out project to work on. Or if you're in the context of something else, you can actually say, here's the specific thing I'm trying to do. And can you write this piece of code? There is, if you're really serious about coding, also a Copilot experience in GitHub. But here we have it here as well. I don't write code. Someone can verify this for me and tell me how accurate it is. But it's giving me all of that information there. And then I can just go ahead and copy that and use it in my project. We can also use this on a mobile device. Everything I've just shown you, you can do on the mobile device. But this is particularly useful if you've got an image of something in your photo library. Here's one where I am searching to see if I can find where I can buy this particular Lego set. And if you are out and about and you want to take a photo of something, if you're in an art gallery and you want to know more about a particular painting, then you can do that and find out more about it rather than having to search that. Let's go back and create another new topic here. We saw in the splash video the idea of being able to say quiz me on organic chemistry. So let's actually go ahead and do that. I don't know anything about organic chemistry, so this is going to be interesting. Now, I'm actually sitting here in the precise mode, so that's going to help me out. It's asking me what is the I don't even know what these things are or how I can pronounce them, but let's just take a guess here. So this is now getting me into an experience where it's a chat experience, not just a single prompt, single response, but I'm actually going back and forth. And I <laughs> look at that lucky guess. Um, would you like another question? No, thank you. I'm good. What we can also do with this, let's just go back and pop it back in the more creative mode. Play a game of 20 questions with me. So this is something where you can have it understand the basics of a game. This is a pretty standard game that it's going to know the rules of, but you could actually also describe a game with rules that you want it to play. And it's actually able to do that interaction with you adhering to the games. So you can ask me yes or no questions. What's your first question? Is it an animal? And off we go with the questions. No, it's not an animal. So let's cheat here and see that it adheres to the rules of the game. What kind of thing is it? it will actually understand the game and tell me that it can't do that because the game requires a yes or no answer. And it's actually allowing me to have another question left. Very generous of it. I'm interested if you've done anything with playing games or quizzes on this, because I think this is a really useful feature of AI that I would like to explore more. Let's do something else here now and do a comparison of using it for a search engine type thing. What's the hottest day on record in Melbourne in the last 50 years? This is the city where I live. While it's doing that, I'm just going to go across to the search engine of my choice, sorry, Microsoft. <laughs> this is what we'll get. So we've got this example, it's come from Wikipedia. And I do remember that day, that certainly was a very hot day here. And we've got exactly the same search result. So you can use this because this is connected to the internet. I've got that toggle that was on before to do that. But we can actually go a step further. Don't limit yourself to just search engine thinking when you see that box here. Create a table of the weather in Melbourne and highlight changes in the weather patterns. This is something that would be really hard to do with a search engine. You'd actually have to find the site. Maybe you could export some data and put it in an Excel and work with it. But this is where the power of this kind of tool really comes into its own more than just searching for one fact is asking it. And this is a rethinking process for all of us. We're very conditioned to search engine type searching. And that's certainly what the statistics show that most people are using this for. So look at this, including edit in Excel. So we're going to be able to take that straight out into Excel. It's actually preparing a table for me with all of the information. It's actually giving it to me both in Celsius and Fahrenheit. I could have specified for my part of the world, I only want Celsius. The other thing that I do like here is that you're always getting the references that go with this. So this is actually going to, when it's finished, it's going to give me the footnotes, but it's also giving me insights that I didn't specifically know to ask for. I'm also noticing that this is a good source in here. So we're getting information that I can click through and verify all of that, which you absolutely always must do with AI. 
Let's do another example here, topical, given the reason I'm making this video, who is playing in the Super Bowl this year. Again, in my Google search results, I'm going to get all of the information very quickly about what's going on, links to some videos, links to some news experiences as well in there. Let's see what I get here. I'm also going to extend this into some knowledge and research and learning because I'm from Australia and as much as I understand that the Super Bowl is a big deal and Microsoft Advertising Copilot is a big deal, I don't really know anything more about why or what's going on. So let's see how that works out. So I've got all of that information in there and we've got a bit more actually. So it's telling me that it's a rematch of another one. So these teams have obviously played off before. I have got some links to partners. I've got an image there. I've got some articles actually getting a fairly similar experience that I got from my search, but with some different kinds of information. Let's ask it this question. As I said, I'm from somewhere else. I don't really understand what's going on here. This is one of the really good uses of the large language models is to tell it to explain things to you in a certain way based on certain context that you do or don't have. And so then we've got lots of information there that's actually helping me understand exactly what's going on and some more references if I want it. All of this is free. All of this is designed for that personal, creative, learning, productivity type things. You can ask it questions to help you with recipes, with travel. Please put ideas in the comments of things that you've used it for. It's a really great tool. Now, Copilot does exist across all sorts of other Microsoft tools as well. Some of those do have licensing. If you're interested in what this looks like in a work context, Copilot for Microsoft 365 is where you need to go next. Thank you very much for watching.